I managed to train myself in Swedish over the course of 30 days to go from a beginner to an intermediate speaker, managing to have a full 40 minute conversation about an advanced topic with a native speaker who was also a Swedish teacher by the end of it. At the end of this video, I will show you excerpts of a conversation I had at the beginning and one at the end as a demonstration of the advancement in my language level. Now the question that you're probably most interested in is how did I get to that level in only 30 days? And in this video I will show you each of those five practices so you have all the knowledge you need to replicate what I did for your own language learning journey. Now, let's start with the first practice, listening. Specifically, listening to a podcast called Simple Swedish Podcast by Frederick from SwedishLinguist.com. Let's back up a little bit for this one. When I started this challenge, I was pretty much where I left things off two years ago when I first challenged myself to learn Swedish and record the process. One of the main things I used there was listening to this podcast, called Simple Swedish Podcast, where the host Frederick talks about a wide variety of topics in a slightly slower and more simplified way. For me, it was perfect as a more passive way of consuming the language, getting acquainted with the vocabulary and the pronunciation of Swedish. Now, I listened to this podcast sporadically between the end of that challenge back then and the one now, just to somewhat stay at the same level in terms of my understanding of the language. But since it worked so well for me back then, I decided to include included again into my daily practices and use it in a more intense way, so I listen to about one to two podcast episodes a day. I still experience it to be one of the most effective ways to expose yourself to a language listening to a podcast, especially if it's slightly more simplified with some podcast episodes that are a little bit harder so you can challenge yourself, and in this way you take off a crucial element of the language learning process, namely listening and learning how to understand the spoken word. This leads us perfectly into the second and arguably main language learning tool I used throughout these 30 days, the course Strong Swedish. Strong Swedish is a course specifically made for advanced beginners or intermediates to really push their level up to a more advanced level. It was made by Frederick from Simple Swedish Podcasts, and since I already listened to his podcast, which I understood quite well at that point already, I thought it made sense to partner up with him using his course as the most efficient tool to push up my level. It did not disappoint at all. The course is made in a very intuitive way with interesting topics, reading, writing, and grammar exercises without too much hand-holding so you can really push yourself to advance to the next level. It's also made in a way where it actually represents topics, vocabulary, and ways of speaking one would encounter in real life, making it super useful to get a very natural feel for the language, and not just a very classic old textbook kind of approach. I completed about two lessons of the course per day, completing about 60 to 70 percent of the whole course by the end of the challenge, which means you can actually push it further and advance more than I ever did if you just fully complete the course, which I obviously plan on doing after the challenge. Normally people are recommended to do it at a slightly slower pace than what I did with those one to two lessons a day and complete the whole course in about 90 days more or less, but since I really wanted to push myself, I went about it a little bit more speedily. This might seem like a given, but reading is crucial to deepen your understanding of the language. A tip I got from Frederick as well about language learning is to pick a book you've already read in another language and to read it now in the one that you're currently learning. A classic example and the one that I actually went with since I've always been a big fan is to read Harry Potter. I've read all of the Harry Potter books multiple times as a kid because I was such a big fan so for me it was like I knew the story perfectly already so I can just like read in another language, learn the language better that way and still understand perfectly what's going on because I just know the whole context of the book. So basically on a daily basis, usually right before I went to sleep, I read a couple of pages in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in Swedish. Now reading this was great to further enhance my vocabulary but also have like a more holistic understanding of the language because I know the context of the book and you can kind of like try and understand what generally is going on without specifically having to understand every single word individually. This whole process also felt like it got easier so I definitely recommend this to also be a part of your language learning journey. Now another one that makes its return from the past challenge that I did because it worked so well is italki. This is an online platform where you can connect with native speakers and teachers and you usually don't have to pay them that much. It's uh, They're very affordable prices and you can just have one-on-one -on -one private sessions with them to really have actual conversations already and practice speaking the language, which obviously is very crucial, especially for the goal of this challenge. So I had about seven or eight 45 minute sessions on italki for this challenge with a native speaker. I really cannot recommend this one enough. You know, just actually having a way to speak the language already on a regular basis does so much. Like you can have organic conversations where you practice it in a very natural way and you also learn to think on the spot while you're actually talking. So yeah, just all in all, 
one of the best things you can do is to just dive in head first and try to speak even though you make a lot of mistakes. You just have to go with that, accept that and move on and just try to get your point across, which is what you know, learning a language is all about is just to get better and better at getting your point across in the best way and the most correct way possible without getting hung up on the mistakes you make along the way. All right, now at the end, the fifth one that I did on a regular basis every single day was Bubble. Bubble is a language learning app. It's not unlike Duolingo, but it's a little bit better in my opinion. You know, it's a little bit more structured, a little bit higher level. Um, but it's still playful and that's what the point of including this in the list is because all these other things are quite intense, require a lot of concentration and even though the exercises on Bubble are also sometimes challenging and you have to think about them, they are presented in a more, you know, playful and easier going kind of way. So it's just a little bit more relaxed of a process to actually engage with the app. You're still learning, you're still like interacting with the language, it's still in your head, you're still thinking in that language, but it's a really more relaxed approach. All right, and those are the five main things. Now I'm gonna go over some bonus things that I also did in a little bit more of a sporadic way, but they also obviously add up and they complement those five practices that I just went over. First little bonus item is a pen pal. Now I was lucky that someone reached out to me on Instagram just about at the start of the challenge because they had just watched the first two videos that I made about learning Swedish and they were also learning Swedish. So they asked if we could just regularly talk a little bit with each other to practice writing the language. And I thought that's perfect because it just gives me another opportunity to practice actually writing the language and doing it in an organic way, actually having a conversation with another human being about natural topics that we're interested in. So we talked a little bit about history, we talked about travel, we talked about general daily life, just in a very organic, natural way. So that was a great little practice. I did that on an almost everyday basis. Usually it just took me between like five and 10 minutes every time to just write some messages back and forth. And that was about it. But in the end, obviously, it will add up. Another bonus tip is to practice self-talk. This sounds like you're coming straight from the nut house, but actually it's super helpful to just redirect, you know, the internal commentary that you already might have in your head on general life and just redirect it to, what if I was in this situation and I had to explain it in the language that I'm learning in Swedish? So what I did, for example, when I was cooking or when I was walking down the street toward going towards the gym, I always asked myself, how would I explain this right now in Swedish? It's a super easy kind of like laid back kind of way to just practice a uh, language, you don't have to do, there's no pressure involved, it's just asking yourself a question, how would I say this right now in this language? But in the end, another thing that adds up and it just trains your brain to be a little bit more active with the language that you're trying to learn. Another little bonus item is vocabulary lists. Now this wasn't used so much, but I did write down at the end of my italki sessions or sometimes when I was reading some of like a word that I really wanted to remember. And I wrote it down somewhere on a Word document or on, in my notes app on my phone. And then afterwards, sometimes uh, I would read through it and try to remember it and make it a part of my active vocabulary. It's a useful little thing to do. Just have that habit of sometimes writing down a word that you actually want to remember or a little saying or whatever it might be you try to make it stick a little bit better in your brain last bonus item is YouTube this was also included in the first challenge that I did with Swedish but it came back now also through the strong Swedish course that I was following sometimes there was a link to a YouTube video that we should watch and it's through strong Swedish that I learned about two very good for me actually uh, channels on YouTube called new hits moron which is basically just like a daily newspaper kind of presentation on YouTube where some hosts talk about the news in very short formats so it's very digestible usually it's not super hard to understand and it's you know, explain in a very clear kind of Swedish. And then also Snabfakta, which is another YouTube channel where they talk about certain topics and they just explain it in a very visual way. There's also like text involved. And what I also did then was actually go through the comments because I do that on every YouTube video when I watch them, I usually like have a look at the comments. I did the same there and obviously the comments were in Swedish. So that gave me another opportunity to read a little bit more about the actual topic of the video and read about people's opinions on said topic. So 
So, you know, all in all, that was also like a great little extra added bonus thing to add into my somewhat regular routine. So yeah, those are all the things that I basically did throughout this challenge. It all added up nicely and I feel like I made a lot of progress in a short amount of time. Not in the least, again, thanks to that course, Strong Swedish, that really like structured a lot of what I was learning and did it in a way that really, you know, challenged me level-wise and really pushed my level up. So definitely recommend that one. Also definitely the podcast by Frederick. And um, that being said, it's all just about, you know, immersing yourself as much as possible in the language. And I really try to do that more and more in these 30 days to like really think more in Swedish, challenge myself to talk in Swedish internally and externally. And yeah, it's just, again, all about immersion and I felt like it worked out pretty well. So now for the demonstrations, I will show you a conversation that I had with Frederick, the host of Simple Swedish Podcast and the creator of the course Strong Swedish. In the beginning where you'll see that I was struggling quite a bit because it was the first time in a long time that I tried to speak Swedish ever since that challenge two years ago. And then uh, right after we'll get to where I'm at now, basically. Ja, jag heter Fredrik. Jag eh, kommer från en liten stad nära Göteborg i Sverige. Och eh, jag är 34 år gammal. Jag bor eh, just nu i Spanien, i Valencia. Jag har bott i Valencia i två år och jag... Eh, jobbar med att eh, skapa material för eh, folk som lär sig svenska. Så ja, eh, vad heter du? Jag heter Sven. Det är eh, väldigt s- en svensk eh, namn. Ja, tror. väldigt svenskt namn. <laughs> Och så du, du hade din eh, födelsedag i två dagar? Ja, precis. Och eh, för f- två dagar sedan. För, för två dagar sedan, okej. Okay. Har du en, en, en fest? För din födelsedag? Jag ska ha fest på lördag. Alltså nu på lördag, den kommande lördagen. Så din födelsedag, vilket oh, min, min datum? Ja, för... ah, okej, okay, okej. Okay. Uh-huh. På um, f- 14 um, april. 14. 14 uh-huh. april. Ja. Så den 14 april. Den 14 april ja. är min födelsedag. Ja, du kan säga, ja. jag fyllde år den 14 april. Jag är... Um... 26 uh, år gammal nu. Mm-hmm. Var bor du? Jag bor i Brussel nu, uh, i Belgien. Men uh, också i, i, uh, i Tyskland. Jag uh, reser uh, mm-hmm. från, från Brussel. Ja, så du bor på två ställen? Exakt. Och så att du åker mellan Brussel och uh, Tyskland? Exakt. Som ofta, Exakt. eller? Ofta är jag är, um, en vecka på månad. Jag är i Tyskland. Eller kanske um, två veckor. Uh, 50-50, jag tror. Okej, okay. alltså du hade en arbetsjobbmöjlighet? Uh, ja, yeah, jag hade en jobbmöjlighet um, i England. Jag hade 21 år och uh, jag flyttade till England. Så du, du var klar med dina studier då? Med min, med min bachelor. Mm, men uh, jag, var inte, jag, jag, jag var inte klar här med min master. <laughs> All right, that was the first conversation. Like I said, not super fluent. You see that I have a base in Swedish, but I make a lot of mistakes. I have to think a lot, and um, I kind of make my way through the conversation okay, I would say, but you know, there's still so much work left to be done. There still is so much work left to be done right now, don't get me wrong, but at least, as you'll notice, there has been quite some improvement. So let's jump into the second conversation where we talk about relationships, which is a little bit more of an advanced topic, but one that we were both interested in. So let's just jump into it so you can have a listen. Som jag, jag sa det um, innan uh, den här konversationen, um, jag vill prata lite om relationer eftersom jag tror mm. att det är en väldigt intressant uh, ämne och uh, Jag tror att ja, du sa det också att det är intressant för dig så det är bra att prata lite om uh, relationer och lärdomar från uh, tidigare um, förhållanden. Så, ja. Ja. Du är fortfarande ja, i en uh, förhållande? Nej, jag är inte, jag har inte i ett förhållande just nu. Ah, okay. Jag har varit singel i 
ett och ett halvt år. Jag var, jag var i ett förhållande eh, i två och ett halvt år och det tog slut för ett och ett halvt år sedan. Ja. Ah, Okej, okay. jag förstår. Ja, min, ja, mitt förhållande tog slut uh, uh, i två veckor nu. <laughs> I två veckor nu så det är fortfarande lite ja, um, nya för mig. Jaha, hur långt var det? Uh, bara f- Fem, sex månader. Ja, jag hade två andra uh, förhållanden i mitt liv. Men det, det tog slut för två veckor sedan? Alltså, bara... Ja, två, tre veckor. Ja, det exakt. är nytt då. Ja, men... en uh, ny, ny livssituation just nu. <laughs> ja, precis. Så det är väldigt... Um, ja. Det blir bra för att uh, prata lite om det eftersom uh, jag har lärt mig mycket igen. Um, men förhållanden mm. avslutades på... Um, på äh, goda villkor, så det är, uh-huh. det är inte så dåligt, men det är fortfarande inte lätt. Ja, jag tror att äh, vi kan alla äh, lära oss äh, mycket av äh, förhållanden och äh, mycket, äh, mycket över äh, kommunikation och äh, känslor och liv i vad skulle du, helhet. Definitivt. Vad, vad skulle du säga är det, äh, det viktigaste? För att ett förhållande ska fungera? Ja, oh, kommunikation. Absolut, det är nummer ett. Mm. Yeah. Jag tror att kommunikation är nummer ett. För att det är naturligt att säga att kommunikation är nummer ett. Faktiskt, det är så uh, ja, självförklarande. För, Vad tror du? Är det också kommunikation? Ja, ja, jag skulle definitivt säga öppen och ärlig kommunikation. Ja, yeah. ja. Yeah. Yeah, så att man är liksom ärlig med varandra och liksom om det är någonting som, som inte funkar mm-hmm. så måste man liksom, man måste prata om det direkt, man måste ta upp det direkt. Ja, absolut. Var det lätt för dig att, att, um, att vara, uh, nej, jag vet inte, ensamt igen? För mig är det alltid, det är alltid väldigt ja, ja, svart. Ja, jag är inte en person, jag är väldigt... Uh, mer ex- extrovert. Så det är lite uh, svårt för mig att, att vara ensam. Jag vet inte hur det var för dig efter. Jag har alltid varit, jag är ganska van vid, jag har alltid varit van vid att vara ensam och jag gillar att vara ensam och jag behöver mycket egen tid. Det är väl in, har det kanske inte varit jättesvårt men det som är det svåraste är ju att när man är så nära någon och den person, det, liksom, det blir som att man för, förlorar ju sin bästa vän. Mm. Ja, absolut. Det är var jätte, jätte svårt. Ja. Yeah. Det var... Det var ju... Ja. Yeah. ja det, var, det var inte lätt att känna det så. Var det den... Den, um, st- den största... Saker... Och den största två saker att du... Du ska fokusera på... Uh, med den nya förhållanden. Åh, oh, det var en, en bra fråga. <laughs> jag tror um, en grej är definitivt att, att, jag alltid, liksom, att jag alltid ska kunna vara mig själv till 100 procent. Mm. Att uh, jag inte ska behöva liksom, att, att uh, den andra personen accepterar allting och litar på mig. Vi litar på varandra och uh, vi döljer ingenting för varandra och vi accepterar varandra för Exakt för, för de vi är. Men eh, är det och, inte så att eh, man måste alltid ändra lite saker? Ja, man måste alltid kompromissa lite. Yeah. Men det finns någon slags gräns för när man förlorar sig själv. Mm, yeah, okay, nej, absolut. Och den gränsen är inte, inte alls lätt att veta. Men, men jag tror att man lär sig var den gränsen går om man mm. jag tror liksom, om man har gått igenom några förhållanden ja. så vet så lär man sig mer och mer. Jag kan säkert komma på massa saker um, men det var det, jag t- det var det jag tänkte på nu. Vad, vad säger du själv? Jag har fortfarande kommunikation och eh, att vara ärlig med mig själv och med min partner är fortfarande nummer ett. Såklart men mm. um, också jag tror alltså att... Att, och det, och jag, att vara det från början för det ibland kan man Vissa saker som är jobbiga kanske man, man tänker att nej men det funkar, det, det kommer säkert funka. Om det inte är bra nu så det är ofta samma problem. Liksom, jag tror 
i de flesta förhållanden så är det oftast samma problem som anledningen till att det tar slut. Det är ofta ett problem som, all, som har funnits där hela tiden. Ja, jag tror också att det är så. Men ja, jag vet inte en annan sak för mig. Um, det är en svart fråga, men... Uh, <laughs> ja, det var din fråga. <laughs> ja, ja, jag vet, jag vet, jag vet. Det var väldigt spontant. Så, nej, för mig... Jag tror att... Um, Tidigare, ja. ibland var jag lite, jag vet, in, jag vet inte exakt hur man säger det på svenska, men jag var, jag var väldigt ärlig, men lite mm, för ärligt ibland. Så du var lite för ärlig, du menar att du sa, liksom, du kanske inte behövde säga så mycket, eller vad menar den, du? Den, ja, den, den sätt, den sätt uh, på var, var min, min, min problem lite, ja. jag sa det. Ibland jag sa det alltså, någonting väldigt ärligt, men det var lite... Uh, mm. Du menar att du kunde ha valt dina ord bättre, kanske? Ej, precis, precis, precis. Det är inte värt det, det att, uh, att det är en väldigt stor problem efter det. Uh, eftersom på slutet av den, den uh, konversationen det var faktiskt inte en, en väldigt stor uh, sak att jag ville säga, men det var... Det var en liten sak. Det var nästan, jag vet inte hur man säger det, men det var, lite, det var nästan dåligt. Det var, det var lite, nästan min. Hur säger du min? Lite e- elakt. Det var lite elakt. Ja. Så jag menar det inte på en elakt sätt, men det, det, det låter Nej. så. Vet du vet vad, exakt vad du menar? Ja. Så so där you have it. There definitely is a big difference between the first conversation and the second in terms of fluency and also in terms of level, I would say. So yeah, I hope that can serve as some motivation for you to actually uh, have a more systematic approach about learning a language when you're getting into language learning, whether it be Swedish or another one. I just want to say another big, big thank you. Stort tack till Frederik for helping me out with this. And um, you know, his podcast is available for everyone and Strong Swedish, his more advanced course is available for purchase on his website site which I will also link down below in the description and yeah generally I just had a really fun time with this challenge again it was challenging at times you know like putting in those hours on top of work and everything else that I was doing at the time but it definitely is an awesome thing to do learning a language because it opens up a whole new world for you I just find the whole process super rewarding and I can only recommend everyone to try and learn a new language whether it be Swedish or another one so thank you for watching this video I hope it was helpful and check out Frederick's stuff down below if you're interested in learning Swedish specifically he's amazing at what he does and he's been an enormous help to me personally and I just realized that I didn't have a proper ending to my video so I just want to say thank you for watching hope you got something out of it don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video and uh, see you in the next one bye